All right, all right, all right. I realized that my audio was off. I'm, I'm so sorry. So good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Dr. O uh, greeting you from the land of Texas and United States. Um, I don't know where you are now. I'd like to have, have a little greeting from you there. Say hi on the chat. Uh, and let me know if the audio and video are coming out okay uh, before I proceed. Would you guys give me a little feedback uh, on the chat? Hopefully you are not driving or flying or operating a machine. You are just a little bit relaxed uh, and hopefully uh, you can uh, you can connect uh, and say something on the chat. <laughs> All right, from Dallas. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're not too far. I'm actually here in Northeast Texas uh, and so very nice. Snuggle Audio Works. Uh, hello from St. Louis. Yeah, thank you guys for connecting. That's terrific. Uh, I was saying that uh, part of this year's plans, and Lane, uh, thank you from Huntsville, Utah. I know where that is. Yeah, I used to work in one of the university campuses of Utah not too long ago, teaching engineering over there at the South uh, part of the state. So anyhow, um, I wanted to say that part of my plan this year with all of you guys that have some connection with my content and me, um, I want to be able to provide a live event like this one uh, every month. And uh, I will be also recording some live material uh, for you guys um, that uh, you can hopefully use and give me some feedback on. Uh, I got lots of tools that I've been using over the years, uh, and it came, I came across this idea, why not uh, share the very same tools that I use for my practice as a consultant and teacher uh, with my audience, my friends who are in the same field here. And so thank you guys for coming on board this morning for however long you can stay. It's going to be approximately an hour long uh, program this morning. Uh, but, of course, anyone else who is not present will be able to replay this uh, live streaming today. So are you guys doing good this morning? Yeah, thanks for uh, taking a little time to to um, come on board and join me for this event. Um, and thank you for setting apart that uh, time in your agenda to be able to do that. I know we're all busy, so hopefully this Saturday we're going to get some benefits out of this conversation. All right, so without further ado, um, whoever is going to join us is going to join us. Uh, we'll go on. And uh, what we got here is, you know, in the days we live, there is so many tools out there um, that people from all walks of life who are in technology are coming out with. Um, some tools are well-tested tools. Other tools are still being uh, tested in the process. Um, so hopefully what I'm going to share with you this morning, uh, if you're not familiar with them, you're going to find them useful. If you already have some familiarity with them, you're going to find that uh, these are the industry standard tools that are being used for a lot of the design, modeling, uh, and um, uh, testing designs before they go into production, uh, whether that's a, that's a, mechanical, electromechanical, electronic system, uh, control system, or whatever, these are the tools that are being used today. And so we both use it uh, for industry practice and for training and educational purposes. Um, so here I have a bundle of those tools. Uh, these are not all the tools that I use, but the ones that I use the most um, are listed in here. And they're good for any kind of work uh, around the realm of what you will call mechatronics, really, um, automation, electrical, electronics, computer controls, and more. And so that's all mechatronics, uh, which is kind of an emerging uh, theme in engineering. Uh, if you don't know what mechatronics is, I'm sure you probably have heard mechatronics, and you might even know what that is. But just for our conversation here, mechatronics is defined as the combination of the classical engineering and technical disciplines of electrical, uh, mechanical, 
computer and control systems. And so this is kind of an emerging uh, theme in industry and in academia um, to marry all these various kinds of technologies and make a new science, if you will, that we call that mechatronics. So anyways, the tools we're talking about here are tools that are being used for mechatronic system design of all sorts. Uh, and so the first one is multi-SIM. Uh, and multi-SIM is a product by a company that actually is based out here in Texas, National Instruments. Um, and they have uh, a variety of flavors around this product, uh, multi-SIM. They have free licenses. Uh, they also have a cloud base. They also have a desktop product. And of course, you can either subscribe um, in the cloud or buy yourself a license of this product. Uh, you may want to go the route of education because usually education gets good discounts and uh, try to get that product if you ever want to buy the license so that you don't have to pay uh, the full price. Uh, if you were going to be using this for industrial applications, they might charge you the full price of the license, but uh, you can still use a, um, a demo product that you can extend up to 45 days, or you can buy a uh, educational license, which I think runs around 30 uh, or so dollars. Um, I'll get you more information on that. So that's multi-sim. The other one is called Tinkercad. This is actually a product of AutoCAD, the big company that produces uh, software for mechanical and other design. They have actually extended a lot of their usage and product to other areas like um, SolidWorks and AutoCAD uh, are part of the competing uh, companies in terms of software design. And they have both um, gone beyond just the mechanical, classical, traditional design. And now they have introduced other features to their software. So um, Auto Tinkercad is a, baby, is a baby of AutoCAD. And uh, I plan on giving you a little demo, guys, this morning, not just a talk, but a little demo um, so that you guys can use it. And uh, whenever I build any new um, design product, uh, you know, video uh, using these tools, I can pass that information to you. You can replicate. And if you find that useful, you can always use my templates as a way to get started. But again, again, Tinkercad um, has within itself um, the ability to do coding. And that is, you could do a lot with Arduino, which is a very popular platform for microcontrollers, microprocessor design. And you also have the ability to do mechanical design, like 3D design. Uh, and of course, the one that we're gonna be focusing, focusing on is the electronics aspect of Tinkercad. All right, so that's Tinkercad, uh, a second of the uh, you know, second uh, tool in my list that I use for my practice and for my academic uh, job with engineering and technical students. And then for digital design and microprocessor design, there's a couple of uh, pieces of software that I use. Uh, one is called uh, Bibato. Uh, the company that produces that is called Silinx. Uh, I do not know uh, where the company is based out. Um, it might be an American company perhaps, but they produce this software called Bivato. And the idea with Bivato and Quartos, uh, Quartos uh, actually is a product of Altera, and Altera is a product of uh, Intel, uh, and they also pro produce this model sim. So all of these software on the third line here are what's called FPGA uh, HDL software, which stands for Programmable Gate Array, a hardware description language, right? Programmable gate array, hardware description language. And so here's what's happening. Uh, in the old days, when I went to school, and that might be the case for you too, when I went to school, um, we did a lot of digital logic design, computer logic design. In fact, we built some uh, you know, computer-like devices. It was all hardware, right? It was all integrated circuit. Uh, the classical and or not S4s and you know, multiplexer decoders and all that. It was all manually done uh, by hand. In other words, you have to uh, put the ICs or integrated circuits on a protoboard and connect that via wires, right? Uh, well, that has changed. 
And the new arena for digital logic design is FPGA ACL. And so uh, again, these are the two pieces of software um, that, um, that I recommend because I use them in my own practice to create projects and to help students create their, their own projects. Um, I know a couple of you have just joined um, our meeting here. Will you tell us where you're coming from? Uh, the last two of you that have just joined us, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, this is Dr. O, and we got a number of friends from around the globe here. Um, and I'd like to hear you uh, give me a, a little message on the chat uh, so that I know you're uh, listening well, and the audio and the video is coming well. We're discussing these uh, engineering software tools that we can all use for the enhancement of our work, uh, whether that's in industry or training, academia or whatever the case might be. So give me a little give me a little message on the chat. Uh, the rest of you that are joining us, okay? All right, so FPGA was the last thing that we were discussing and we'll see what if we can do a little demo. Uh, <laughs> our time is always limited, but I'll, I'll do my best to give you a demo on each of these pieces. And then the last one is um, the latest software for um, automation and controls. Uh, if you have done automation and controls, um, you know that the traditional um, way to do PLCs automation control is by using the most common programming language, and that's Latin logic, right? We, we know that. Um, have any one of you just by chance used Latin logic uh, in your whereabouts? Send me a little message in the chat. Yes, I have used Latin logic. Um, and so there is a variety of companies that pr produce controllers, and of course, the, the common way to program this controller have been using Latin logic. Um, one, well, there's a couple of competing um, industries um, or companies in the area of automation and controls. And you wanna guess who those companies are? You can send a little message in the chat. You, you wanna guess who those competing companies are, which are the big competitors in automation and controls, PLCs? You probably know that. I'm guessing you do know. All right, so anyhow, uh, we'll take a look to this uh, CCW software um, that it's it's one of the one of the popular ones. There's also uh, a, a movement in the arena of open source PLC. So there's uh, there's a company that had just came out and they call themselves open PLC. Uh, now, there's also another product along the same line, which is Factory IO. Um, and so, anyway, this could be a lot uh, that we're talking about. In fact, we we have just mentioned here at least two, four, six, eight, you know, around nine different products um, that that uh, that you are that you can use uh, based on your circumstances and needs. And so that that is the that is the line of products uh, that we're talking about, uh, the ones that I've that I've used in the past, and the ones that I recommend because they're very mature in where they are. Okay. All right. So let's, let, let's look a little more. Uh, this might be information that you guys want to make note of. Um, again, this video is going to be published. Uh, and you're going to have this information to review, share it with your friend uh, if you like. Uh, and um, if you if you are okay so far, we got another another uh, 40 minutes or so. Could you give me a thumbs up um, to say, yeah, this thing makes sense, uh, or doesn't make sense, so that we can change the the theme. Give me a thumbs up on the on the live stream uh, screen there. Just send me a thumbs up and see if the message coming across, the information is making sense. Um, I wanna make sure that we're both on the same page. All right. Nice, I got a thumbs up. Thank you for that thumbs up. Is 
That's good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that's the idea that you guys can find this useful. Great. Thank you so much for the feedback. And so here we have on the second slide um, the four groups of products we're talking about. And I'm going to dwell that a little bit so you can take note of the sites uh, where you can get, uh, you know, free licenses of these products. Uh, and if you do work for a company, uh, then you may have to pay for these products as a licensed product for commercial productions. Uh, but again, for personal use, um, you can get around and um, find a license that you actually can use for your own productions. Thank you for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. All right. So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is give you a short demo on, on the use of these products. Um, and uh, we're probably going to start with uh we're going to start with multi sim and then we'll cross over to ccw and then we'll do tinkercad and we have time we'll do fpga hdl so that sounds great all right let me let me go ahead and minimize this uh give me a second and i want to start out with multi sim okay i'm gonna minimize this for you and i'm going to move this over okay so making the switch here to multi sim see if i can stretch this window a little more all right And once again, thanks guys for your patience. Um, my live streaming software wasn't working too well, so I had to to work a way around this. Uh, and so here is here is a design uh, in multi sim. Uh, let me just start by the first one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the first one here. So here is a little design, uh, and this is using multi sim. Uh, this is actually the desktop version of multi-SIM. Okay, desktop version of multi-SIM. And what we got here is just a, a little small design um, that consists of a, a pilot light, right, with a uh, drain resistor. And basically, you can... You can power up and unpower that light with that switch, as you can see. Okay. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to have to run the simulation. So I'm going to run the simulation. All right. Simulation is running. And there is the, the light energize. There's the light de energize. Right. And we have actually a voltmeter across that resistor, which is a voltage divider that is checking out uh, the voltage. So th this is what you could do. Uh, they actually have also 3D parts and components that you can use besides your schematic, right? So this is an example of the use of Tinkercad. Let me do the second example uh, with the inverter, right? So this is a logic a logic gate. Let me arrange this. So represent a logic gate, which is an inverter. Uh, and we recall from basic digital logic gate, an inverter takes an input signal and outputs the opposite of that signal, right? So here we have an inverter um, that we can run and simulate Right? When the inverter has a one at the input, it provides a zero at the output, right? So whenever the input is true, the output is false, right? And whenever the, the output is false, 
I'm sorry, the input is false, the output is true. So that's a design for an inverter, a digital logic inverter, nonetheless. Okay, so that's that one. All right, again, I'm gonna be working on, uh, maybe send you guys, uh, you know, creation of these designs. It takes a little bit of the creation. I'm just giving you a demo on the actual operation. Okay, so here's another another digit, the logic gate. This happens to be the OR gate. If you recall the truth table for an OR gate, an OR gate has two or more inputs. And the idea is any of the inputs of an OR gate has to be true so that the output is true, right? Um, other words, if the inputs are false, the outputs will be false. So here is a representation or design for a OR gate, and I can I can make input input A high, right? And the output is high. I can make input B high, and the output is high, or I can make them both high, high high, and the output is still high, right? So that's a design for uh, a simulation and test of an OR gate, right? So that will be the OR gate using multi-SIM. All right, and lastly, we're gonna do an AND gate. This is an AND gate for um, the test of an, an AND gate. We recall from the true table, essentially that all of the inputs have to be high before the output is high, right, for an AND gate. So let's run this one, in this case, our inputs A and B for this particular gate, 7408, are low. Therefore, the output is low. If I make input A high, the output is still low because the condition is that all inputs have to be high, right, on an AND gate in order to be, to be able to have a high output. So this is a little bit of a rundown of digital logic gates using multi-SIM, right? So that is the use of multi-SIM for basic digital logic gate design. Uh, and again, uh, why do we use these tools? Well, part of the reason to use these tools is because it will facilitate the process of actually developing a product in real life. In the old days when we didn't have this tool, we used to burn a lot of components before we got, we got a product out uh, tested and prototyped. Nowadays, you can design, simulate, uh, test on the virtual workbench, if you will. And once you know that this system is going to work, then you go ahead and implement it. Uh, that's actually a common practice pretty much across, across all technical industries. All right. So far, so good, guys. So this is multi-SIM. I'm going to go ahead and shut down multi-SIM here. All right. Give me a little, a little bit of heads up, heads up on multi-SIM. A little bit of heads up on multi-SIM. Okay. Yeah, another Texan, 1995. Thanks for showing up. Uh, thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you guys for staying tuned in. We're doing pretty good. So far, we talked about the various software tools. And we also have introduced one of those software tools, which is multi-SIM. I am going to go ahead and start... Uh, the second package here in a minute. If you guys don't have any questions, sorry about my pet. Uh, my son's dog, she's barking. So I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. Uh, that happens these days when you're doing remote work. So, okay. So here I have, uh, this is the one of the prime uh, automation and control software. It's called uh, connected Component Workbench, um, CCW, right? CCW. <laughs> okay, that sounds right, uh, Texas. You wanna? Yeah, yeah, right. I think that, that happens. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for staying to it. So uh, we, we just talked about multi seam as a um, software virtual design tool 
uh, to be able to produce a design before we go and build that system and prototype it and produce it, right? So now we have here a automation and controls PLC software that is very popular. And part of the reason why it's popular is because there is some competing companies out there uh, and I'm not gonna advertise no company, but uh, there's two significant uh, companies that are the leaders, if you will, in the market. Now, you guys know that there's controls and PLCs of all sorts and brands, right? There's a lot of those. But two of the major producers of software and hardware for that industry are Rockwell, Allen Bradley, and Siemens, right? Uh, American and German companies. And so I'm showing you here the product, which is called Connected Component Workbench, abbreviated is CCW. And this product um, actually is free of charge for personal use. Uh, and you may have to uh, get the professional license. But to be honest with you, I actually have done consulting projects in automation and control. And I've used this very same software which by the way, this is a secret uh, for all of us, is a software that is free of charge. So you guys, after this session, can go, if you have not done it, create a account at the Rockwell.com um, site, Alan Bradlett Rockwell.com site, and find the CCW, uh, CCW software and download the software if you're interested in learning about Automation and Controls PLC programming. All right, so this is a big one. Uh, there's actually two more uh, that I use, um, uh, but this is the one that I use the most. Um, a lot of my projects are built out with this. Now, the beautiful part about this software is that this is the real deal. In other words, whenever I design, test, and simulate a project on this software, the same design is ready for production. In other words, all I have to do is download these onto a piece of hardware, whatever my compatible hardware is, and I already have a product, uh, even from the you know, early stage of uh, design test simulate. I already have a product which I can just download. So anyhow, uh, here is this product. Uh, as I mentioned before, one of the popular programming languages for automation controls PLC has been um, Ladder Logic, right? Ladder Logic um, has been one of the main programming languages. And here we have an example of a Ladder, ladder Logic program, okay? Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And thanks for those of you that um, for some reason cannot stay. And thanks for those of you that are actually replaying this live stream today because I know not everybody uh, had a chance to come on board. So anyways, I am looking here at the ladder logic program for a particular application that I have here. Excuse me. And I'm going to run uh, this project. And this particular software has a built-in hardware simulator. That's awesome because, again, in the old days, all I could do um, was to test my software and hope that it will work based on virtualization. Now, today, I can actually pass on or download this software onto my um, simulator, which is a hardware-based simulator. Where is the simulator? And I can test my project. Give me a second here. I'm trying to see where my, oh, here it is. I have to move it over. So here's my simulator. You guys can see it. So that means I am testing a design and I can potentially send that design to um, a 3D simulator that looks a lot like the actual hardware, okay? So if you're not too familiar with automation and controls, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just giving you kind of a demonstration. And again, part of my promise this year is that I'll be, I'll be live streaming some of these events 
and I'll be producing for you some content uh, at least on a weekly basis um, on the use of these tools and what kind of things you can you can do with this tool. But what you're seeing here is a lot of logic program um, that uh, consists of imagine that this is the the, the coding for a machine uh, on a production manufacturing site. And so on the left hand side, we got all the input and that will be sensors and transducers. And on the right hand side, that is the output, which could be pilot lights, alarms, motors, actuators of some sort, right? So um, I have here exactly a way to monitor and control this. And if I, if I run my micro hardware simulator, what is gonna happen is I can see the action of the inputs and outputs on this controller, uh, right? Even without having to download that onto an actual real hardware. So this is a very powerful tool. Once again, one that I use for my own project. Um, and because I, do, I don't do large scale projects, uh, I'm good with the free license. You guys can also get a free license of CCW, right? Um, so the first one, the first round represent the start and stop um, ladder logic for a motor that's motor zero or output zero. The second one actually consists of a another output which is enabled by two different inputs, which they mimic the action of the of the AND gate. In other words, these two inputs have to be on before this turns on. And then lastly, we have on the third part, um, a simulation for an output that takes the condition of the exclusive or in digital logic. Again, I might be talking to you a lot of, you know, argon here uh, because you may not be familiar with, uh, but at the same time, just stay with me. I'm just giving you a demo of the power behind these free tools that you can actually download to learn automation and controls. And by the way, if you do a search on PLC programmer, even now, you're gonna find that there's literally hundreds of companies and jobs for someone who masters the art of PLC programming. So we're talking about a, a very highly sought after beneficial skill. PLC automation controls programmers, they make significant. Um, I mean, and I don't wanna exaggerate here, but the low end of a PLC programming job could be 60 and the high end could be 120 a year. So you have a range of really potential nice income if you ever become a uh, competent PLC programmer. And that's what we're talking about here. This is all about PLC programming. What is the relevance of this? Well, almost every machine today will have a type of controller. Um, whether that's an Allen Bradley or Siemens controller or some other servo controller, but somehow you got to be able to do some programming to the machine. And it's most likely that the programming required for that machine to be controlled by a controller, it's going to be some form of ladder logic programming. Um, so anyhow, let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to go ahead and um, and I'm going to I'm going to download this onto the controller. Okay, and it's gonna take about a minute. All right, let's just hope. Build started. So I'm actually downloading this program that I demonstrated to you onto this controller, right? So we can test it out. That's the idea. And I hope we don't have a breakdown here. I hope everything goes well. So I'm waiting on the program to be downloaded onto the controller itself. So we can go ahead and run it. Okay. And yeah, so nice. We got the program built. You see that? It's compiling, no errors. Okay, that's that's awesome. 
and I'm waiting to have another good message in here. All right, so it looks like we have no errors in here. Everything was built correctly. So, I am going to go ahead and see if we can start running that. Okay, build successful. So this is what you normally do, right? You have a program uh, and then you have to download um, that onto the controller. Uh, one succeeded. All right, and let's see, we place this in run mode. Okay. Okay, so I am going to do a download one more time. Okay, so that's, this usually takes a, a little bit like a minute or so to get that download taken care of. So that's what we're doing, downloading the program. And once it's downloaded, then I'll, dem I'll give you a demo on running this particular application, which is the, the ladder logic or code to run a motor with a PLC controller, right? And that's what we're going after. We, we're running a motor with a PLC controller, all right? And of course, I'm running a number of applications on my, on my laptop and hopefully everything's gonna be good uh, once we get it to the end. Yeah, I need a super powerful computer to run so many things here, right? Uh, so I'm due for a brand new laptop and I think that's gonna be something they're gonna be pursuing soon here. Uh, but this is normal. Whenever you're doing PLC, ladder logic programming, uh, the process of you know converting that code, that ladder logic code into binary, right? Um, so that the computer or controller can understand it's quite a process, so uh, it, it may take a couple of minutes, and especially as we are having here um, uh, to run multiple applications. So thanks for your patience on that. All right, once my... Once my clock is done, we shall be able to run the application. You'll see both the ladder logic um, enhance or illuminate it, and you also will see the actual output of the controller. There we go, at work here in just in just a few seconds. So thank you guys for your patience. Okay, all right, we're doing pretty good. Um, there are three languages that you actually can perm in the CCW software, and that's actually a, a huge advancement on software uh, for PLC controls. Um, the reason being is because the industry for controls have set um, five industry standard permanent languages. And so this company, Rockwell, that produces CCW, Connected Component Workbench, has um, set the software so you can do programming in three different languages. That's, that's awesome. So. You can say that this software is trilingual, right? <laughs> Speaks three languages. And so the three languages that you can program CCW in is in ladder logic, function block, and a structured text. Um, once again, talking about com competent uh, PLC programmers, if you can program in one language like ladder logic, you're good. Um, if you can program in two languages, you're better. If you can program in three languages, you're much better. If you can do four or five languages, you're great. Um, any company looking for automation controls, PLC programmers, 
will pick you up as a, as a PLC programmer because you have domain over multiple languages. And you'll say, why is it that we have so many multiple languages? Why don't we just have English, right? <laughs> American, well, because we need those other languages to do business with, right? Like we have with, you know, Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, and Cantonese and all those languages. Uh, we got to have in the realm of industrial applications, multiple languages to be able to interact uh, with various kinds of software applications and companies and so on and so forth. So anyway, it's taking a little bit. Um, let's see. I think, okay, we have, I have a little issue, but let's just see here. So there is our ladder and there is our program. It says ready. So we're having a little bit of an issue. And again, it's probably computer power that we're dealing here with. So you can see that my inputs are, are being recognized correctly, right? All the inputs are being recognized correctly. But I have a little delay here on the actual the actual output. Um, and I don't know what what's happening. I'm trying to manage multiple screens in here to see if I see any error. All right, so thanks for your patience, guys. This is what it is. Um, and so, anyways, you can see here, oh, here we go, you see that? So now our system is working, you see that? So our system, is exactly doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so you see that? Our outputs are working. Okay, now I'm missing one more thing here. And what I'm missing is that my line of logic up on top should also be illuminated. Um, the input and the output should be on as I turn. Okay, oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, so here we go. You see that? So uh, we had an error here. And so I'm sorry that we had that error. Uh, I just want to show you real quick here. So you can see here that the latter portion of our program is working. I wanted to show you a couple more um, before we move on. And our time is getting short here. But whew, it looks like my software collapsed. Okay, so my software is collapsing. And I'm going to have to let it go. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to have to cross this, uh, close the software. So it's collapsing, but you got the point, right? Uh, sadly, I couldn't show you the other two programming environments, uh, which would have been structured text and function block. But you got an idea, and uh, hopefully that idea will give you an idea to become a PLC programmer of some sort. And so I am going to see. Are you still guys with me? Um, it looks like we might have a glitch on the system. And if we have a glitch on the system, all right, it looks like this might be the end of our live streaming. So, um, Are you still with me? Okay, we're almost at the end of our presentation. We're almost at the end. And I only had one more one more thing to to show you here. 
I'm going to end this process so we can close our presentation. Okay. So I'm going to have to close the program. I don't want to, I don't want to delay anything else here. Okay. I'm going to close this program. Okay. Thank you guys for your patience. These are real things that happen, right? In presentations like these, uh, we're not perfect, right? That's part of, part of the issue. So I'm going to close out this one and I'm going to do a less, a less present, a less item to present. Let's see. I already had it. And so, um, let me, okay. So the less one I'm going to talk to you, it's, it's a wonderful tool called Tinkercad. I already talked to you about that. And with Tinkercad, there's a lot that you can do. Tinkercad is free for educators. Um, you might be able to get an account, but it's another wonderful tool that you can use for the design of you know, software, right? And all of that um, to be able to do electro mechanical software-based programming, design, testing, modeling. So I am going to pull up here an example. All right, and it's a simple example, right, of a very simple system. It really is a power source, a relay, a switch, and a lamp, right? That sounds like a flashlight, right? So. Imagine that you're producing the greatest and latest flashlight. All right. Well, you can use Tinkercad to model your project. And so this is my prototype for that. Okay. So that's my prototype. And you got all these tools to build this stuff here with Tinkercad. That's awesome. And let's go ahead and run it. You have to run the simulation. And now I can test my product, right? So that's that's a the greatest and latest flashlight, which uses a five volt relay as a way to enable the output, which is the light in the case of this flashlight, right? So that's one product, right? Uh, let's do another one. Here's another one. Uh, for those of you that like to do breadboarding prototype, same idea, right? We got a design here. We're going to run it. And now I have a switch here that turns out that system on and off, right? So this is using Tinkercut Electronics. Tinkercut Electronics, very powerful tool. You could do just about anything. Uh, I'm gonna give you a word of caution. It's not perfect. Uh, I have found some, you know, weaknesses in the software, uh, but for what it is, free and you know, 3D code-based uh, software, it's pretty good. So I use it for a number of different uh, training and projects that I've done in the past. Okay, so that's one product. Here is another one, a very simple design now what i'm introducing on this little demo here is the ability to check current right so here's a circuit that consists of two batteries that's two power supplies along with a resistor along with an indicating diode along with a switch so once i run this I can do the same, right? I can check for, for the circuit. And I have an ammeter connected that is doing exactly that. How cool that is. Very cool. Okay. And then lastly, we have a design. Uh, will you promise me, guys, you're not going to break the property, intellectual property rights uh, here? This is actually an actual prototype of a product that I'm working on. This is an actual prototype. Yes, yes, Texas Iwana. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you for that. So this is an actual prototype. I have a prototype for a problem that I have encountered that I'm solving. And so here is an actual project application. Um, on my product that I'm prototyping, I need to be able to uh, sense moisture or water leaking. And I have three sensors in here, right? These are three sensors that will detect moisture, um, you know, water leaking. They could be just sensors of any type. They could be pressure sensors, uh, flow sensors, level sensors. And I want those sensors to send me a signal over um, to an actuator. Uh, that actuator could be anything, could be a motor, could be a light, uh, could be an alarm. And so this is an actual design for a product that I'm actually myself designing for a problem that I have encountered uh, out there. And I even hope to be able to either uh, outsource uh, the um, part creations and my job could possibly work business to business relationship or even build a system myself and sell, sell them out. So I'm using Tinkercad, a free software tool design to prototype my product, right? And you guys can do the same. Um, it, it's exactly for that purpose. So in this particular case, if I run the application, our time is going quick here. What I'm gonna have is I want any of the three sensors to send a signal to the actuator, right? So if this sensor senses water or humidity, I want that sensor to turn on the actuator and send me a signal to a pilot line, right? And it's doing it. That's that sensor, or it could be this sensor. This sensor can be located at various spots in the location or building where humidity or liquid levels are perceived. And this sensor could be sending a signal over um, to a place to be able to uh, actuate or run an actuator or some kind of lights and alarms. All right, so that is my last demo. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming on board today for this exciting live streaming on engineering software tools. Uh, give me a last heads up, uh, telling me this was valuable. Um, I will continue to produce at least a monthly live stream for you guys, and we'll continue to produce on a weekly basis. Um, more software design solutions for your own practice. I bless you all. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be well with you and your family, okay? Thank you so much. And we will be seeing you on another, on another presentation in the future. Keep an eye on announcements on Udemy because... Uh, the next one will be uh, maybe just a pre-recorded um, training of some sort using these tools. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you next time. God bless all. Bye-bye.